Hey, everybody. Welcome to Dad Talk. Today, I am your host, Eric Carroll, joined by Melissa Isaac and Jeff Morgan. Tonight, we have a very special guest. He's a jack of all trades, MMA champion. Uh, I think he was in the military in the spec ops, and he is the founder of Mighty Oaks Foundation. He works with veterans and PTSD, Mr. Chad Robichaud. Chad, how you doing, my man? Good, guys. Thanks for having me on. Hey, I could do a whole episode just on your MMA career, but I, I want to pick at you a little bit about that. Could you tell me a little bit about your MMA career? Well, I, I never like sought after going into MMA, but um, I uh, started martial arts at five years old. So uh, it's, it's, it's a lifelong thing for me. And doing it, competing in MMA was really just a natural progression of competing. And I started off competing in judo and traditional jiu-jitsu, wrestling, those types of things. So my whole life I was a competitor and as I got into Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu, which is the, the primary martial art I do now, and I'm a third degree black belt under Carlson Gracie Jr. Um, I, uh, I just, uh, that was the best way during a time when I first started training in Jiu-Jitsu to compete was in uh, these, uh, back then it was called No Holds Board. And when I say back then, it was like the late nineties, they were called No Holds Board fights. And uh, so I started f competing and using my Jiu-Jitsu to win those fights. I did five amateur fights. Uh, won them all and then I turned professional and you know, ended up being 18 and two as a professional. I won a world championship and uh, my highest rank, I was ranked number six in the world. Um, so, wow. and, yeah, so that was, uh, that was my uh, time doing that. And I don't fight MMA anymore because I'm too busy now and I'm probably maybe too old. I don't think I am when I'm training, but, <laughs> but, uh, but I am 44. So uh, no, I, uh, I still train the jujitsu almost every day. So I was still out there in the mat. I'm still out there in the match, grappling and wrestling and and doing jiu-jitsu. And I probably will um, even compete, continue to compete in jiu-jitsu, just because it's it's healthy for me to do two or three competitions a year. It keeps me put a date on the calendar to compete. It gets me focused and disciplined about to eat right, train hard, and uh, just stay stay disciplined. So I enjoy competing. That's so awesome, my man. And, you know, a lot of what we talk about here on the podcast is what people go through in marriage and divorce, court, parental alienation. And I'm really interested in your foundation, the Mighty Oaks Foundation, dealing with our veterans. Uh, we have many of our veterans that are coming to us every single day. They're fighting a war overseas and then they come back here and they're fighting a war just as hard. Uh, could you tell everybody a little bit about your um, organization? Yeah, well, as you mentioned, is the, the war at home is, is a big war. It's a very real, real war that people, a lot of people don't know about. The veteran suicide rate is over 20 a day. You hear the number 22 thrown around a lot. The most recent VA report says uh, over 20 a day, which that only reports about 50% of the demographic. So we don't really even know what the number is, uh, but one would be too many. Uh, and 20 certainly is too many. And, uh, and then on the family side, you have uh, divorce rates in some different bases, and some bases as high as 80% in the combat veterans. And, uh, and then the, the PTSD diagnostics, uh, diagnosing uh, veterans PTSD is over 30%. And so with a lot of problems in our military community, no surprise, we've been at war for over 20 years. And, uh, and with, with uh, the Obama administration had downsized the military, which put a lot of strain on the military to, uh, to do back-to-back uh, -back consecutive deployments. You know, people like me did eight deployments. A lot of people think that's a lot, but I know people that have done like 20 deployments. Uh, so... I mean, it's right. just a lot of strain in our military community. And uh, and so there has to be a solution out there. And uh, Mighty Oaks brings is one of those organizations that brings a solution to those problems. We do faith-based faith -based, peer to peer mentoring. So we're not clinical. Uh, we have we have a resili resiliency conferences on base where I, I've spoken over 150,000 active duty troops by invitation of commands, go around the world and speak to these warriors and help them give them the uh, tools and the resiliency uh, the resiliency uh, to actually prepare to be combat ready warriors. And then when they come back to be resilient to the hardships they may face. So do a lot on the resiliency side. On the recovery side, we have our legacy program, which we've had 4,000 graduates from. And that's where we bring them in for six days and do that peer to peer uh, faith based mentorship um, and really just take them in depth to whatever they're, they're struggling with and help them recalibrate their lives to the lives that we believe they're created to live. We do that at four different ranches around the country, Texas, Virginia, Ohio, and California. And we have them for those six days. We do that about 30 times a year. And we pay for everything, whether the active duty from the veteran community, spouses. Uh, we have a program for spouses. And we uh, also have started doing it for first responders as well. And when I say we pay for everything, we even cover the travel, uh, their flights to get to the program. So very, very blessed because of a grateful nation that supports us financially through donations. Blessed that we're able to do that for them. 
So that's awesome. You're saying that active duty or veterans that your your um, the Mighty Oaks Foundation reaches out to both. They serve both. Yeah, on the resiliency side, you know, those that are going to active duty troops on bases and speaking. Uh, for example, I go to Marine Corps boot camp every quarter. The the Marine Corps has I'm one of only two speakers the Marine Corps allows to go speak to the recruits at boot camp. I've done that for five years every quarter. I've spoken to over fifty thousand of them, and uh, not only speak to them, but I give them a, a book called Path to Resiliency, which is the pillars of resiliency are you know mental, physical, spiritual, and social. Oftentimes, that spiritual pillar gets overlooked. So I've written a book called Path to Resiliency. It's about spiritual resiliency, and the Marine Corps actually lets us give that to them. And, uh, and, and you know, speaking about five, three to five thousand of them at a time. And in fact, I was just there this week when I was in California speaking with General Heritage, who's the commanding general of the base. And despite the restrictions with COVID, they're going to invite me back to continue that because they value it so much. The, the resiliency training we do, and then on the recovery programs, the legacy programs, we have veterans come from the veteran community. But we also have uh, all four branches that have sent uh, that send our warriors to us on active duty orders. So they come in official military orders to us, and um, and we uh, we've been doing that for about eight years now. Uh, Ten years of our program, but eight years of it, we've had active duty coming in orders to us. All four branches, their PTAD orders. The military doesn't pay for it; they just let them let them go uh, to the program. And uh, I'm real happy again that all four four branches have done that. Uh, we still have yet to get the Coast Guard to do it, but I know they want to. And Space Force is brand new, so mm -hmm. we'll they send them over to, <laughs> to us from Space Force. That sounds funny to say. But it's, it's a real thing. Okay. Well, Shout that, such a needed uh, service. If, if I might talk about that just for one more second, is you know a lot of my clients are active duty, and the command really doesn't know how to react when you have a divorce situation or you have allegations coming from a spouse or just internal strife within the marriage. So a lot of times what they do is they issue, the, they'll, they'll tell the service member to leave and they issue these no contact orders that put even further strain on the relationship where the soldier can't even speak to his kids or whatnot. So, do, so let me ask you your experience in the military. Do, how do you think the command is responding to these family issues? And do you think it's helping or do you think it's hurting? Yeah, I mean, of course, every command is different. Um, it, it's been it's been our experience that we see we see commands that send people to Mighty Oaks, uh, not because it's a faith based program. They believe what we do. They just seen as it has worked on people with people. So if they see someone struggling and going through a divorce, we have a lot of commands that maybe the guy didn't have PTSD or maybe he's not diagnosed with it or whatever the situation when they're going through uh, marriage crises. Mighty Oaks comes up a lot in the commands. Individual commands send them to us. I think systemically across the military, the military has not handled. Uh, marriage and family well did i have not made it a priority uh and you know i come from the marine corps where the marine corps is always the marine corps first everything else second mission first however i believe for those who are married to be combat ready resilient warriors you have to have a stable home front and if you can't fix that if you can't make sure that your 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 warriors have healthy marriages and, and solid home life then they're not going to be the most effective combat ready warriors they're not going to be able to deploy without you know, issues that are going to come up and arise that the command's going to have to deal with. So I think any any good leader, uh, wise commander would would uh, pay attention to their troops' family life and make sure that they give them every resource they need to make sure they have healthy healthy families and strong marriages 